<laughs> what if we mess up? It's fine. Keep oh. going. That's okay. that's how radio works. I mean, it shows that you're. It makes it sound more live, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't go down with the sinking ship. But I can fix certain things. So, yeah, all right. Um, can you fix Rachel's voice? I can't. Okay. There's certain <laughs> things you can't fix. Though. I actually I could, but all right. You girls are ready. <laughs> I'm gonna start you down in three, two, one. Welcome to Columbus's number one female entrepreneur show, 614 Fempreneur. I'm your host, Michael Cheney, and I'm here with my co-host, Jennifer Kessel-White, JKW. What's happening? Hey, hey. I'm so good today. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing great. So I want to jump right into what we're doing here. This is a new show, and this show was really born out of your idea. It's It's new, but it's already the number one Columbus (laughs) radio show. It's this is so exciting. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about what we're doing here with the show, uh, why you and I are so passionate about this topic of being a female entrepreneur, and I really want to dive into how you came up with the idea because I think it's pretty awesome. Thank you. Um, so why don't we start off with you talking about uh, where this came from, why why this topic, and, and how'd you get this started? Okay, so I am a real estate agent, and <clears throat> I... When I started my career, I, and it was only less than two years ago, I did not feel confident that my friends and family would trust that I can take care of the most important purchase or sale in their entire life. So with that information, I felt very vulnerable to how am I going to get new business? What am I going to do? And I listened to a speaker talk um, at a continuing education class I was at. And um, when we were all done, I went up to her and I just said, hey, here's how I feel, and I'm, you know, I just don't think that I can reach out to my sphere on social media, and I don't feel good about it. Um, and she said, that's a mindset thing, get over it. And I couldn't have felt more of a shock to my system at that time than to say, you're absolutely right, what am I doing? I'm inhibiting myself from having the most successful career I can have because of a fear. And at that point, I just decided, like, I'm not going to let fear take over anymore. I'm just going to go into this and be super confident and move forward. So with that being said, I started to talk more about my on social media about my business and what I was doing. Um, And then I started to notice that there were so many other females in the in different industries that I knew that owned businesses and were taking the same risks. I was so fearful. I was going into I was going from a six figure salary into making zero dollars and taking a chance of a commission only basis and owning my own business and then having to deal with accounting, doing all of my accounting, doing different um, law based, you know, things to own a business. So at that point, I was just like, you know what, all these other women are out there doing it. And I felt refreshed every day that I got to see their positive energy and their feedback. And it was, you couldn't even gotten any better than to let me hear that other women were taking these chances too. So at that point, I just thought there's something I have to do. My business started growing rapidly through social media. So I reached out to other females that I knew that owned businesses and said, hey, I would love to talk to you and see where you went or where you came from. How did you feel doing this risky move? Right, exactly. It's so scary. Totally. So, like, the one thing that you're touching on, and at some point uh, throughout the series of these shows, I think we're going to be able to capture, but this this fear that you have, because you are, in your case, you left a secure job, it sounds like. Right. Uh, you started in a, a job or a career where you have to find all your own clients. That's super scary. Because so scary. All of your income depends on what you're doing, how you're hustling. Um, and, and you've chosen to do that through social media, which is awesome. And I know we'll touch more on that. Um, so through, you know, this kind of struggle and this, uh, maybe conversation that you had, you realized kind of this, this fear and you knew that that fear was present probably across the board and anybody that wanted yeah. to, to leave their job and start a business. Um, so that led you to kind of highlight other female entrepreneurs. Yeah. So as I got more popular through social media, I thought, what can I do for other people in the community that are nervous or are scared? And what can I do to help showcase them? And I just thought, I'm going to do a little side, totally complimentary, free, you know, share others, other women's business with my sphere. And maybe somehow I can connect 
all of these women together and we can utilize each other to be more successful because at the end of the day if I can change someone's life even in the smallest way whether it be to grow their business or whether to give somebody else the courage to start a new business um, I would feel like I was the best person ever right in on. my mind right on. so that's exactly where my goal was and what I wanted to do so I just started filming I have a YouTube channel um, under my name, Jennifer Kessel White, K E S S E L hyphen White, W H I T E. And I started filming my 614 Fempreneur monthly videos with women that were in, uh, that owned businesses, all different kinds of businesses. I didn't want anything too similar. I wanted, I want you to have a story. It can't be, no offense, but some kind of trust fund baby opening up a store. Right. right. It needs to be like you did this on your own and you took a chance and it was risky and you were scared as hell. Totally. And that's the only way that I wanted it to happen. So it kind of sounds like through that conversation with whoever you were with at that seminar or whatever, it sounds like you kind of found your why for what you're doing. You know what? I cried about my why not that long ago and I'll tell a small story about it. Um, I always wanted to say that my why was for my family. And I always, if anyone said, what's your why? Why are you doing, why are you in this business on your own? Tell me like the reason for going through. And I always wanted to say, oh, it's for family. I want to make sure that everybody has the best life that I can give them. Absolutely. Because that's, Cause that's mean, the right answer, right? And often you think that's why yeah, you're doing it. But it wasn't. And somebody said, if you're having a problem figuring out your why, come talk to me. And honestly, this was like less than a month ago. And I said, I always say the same thing, but I don't know if it's the right answer. And um, at that point, she asked me a few more questions. And it was another real estate agent. And I just started crying and told her that all, all I wanted was to literally change someone's life. If they could somehow take a risk and start a business and be scared. And if you're not scared, you're not changing. So right. that was the most important thing. If I could talk to other females and let them know, like, this is all worth it. Make a change in your world. That would be awesome incredible awesome so this kind of journey allowed you to kind of explore the six one four fempreneur totally it's how we connected it's right? how we connected uh, yes because i was maybe like the second or third i think you were the third um six one four fempreneur that okay. i started with yep and um i just started it in january so in may because i knew we were doing this i did not have one just kind of waiting for this awesome experience to start but um yeah you reached out and said like hey i want to do that because totally. i asked i'm like who wants to do one right um, so so let me kind of set the framework yeah for so you kind of started this project on your own super cool you were doing on like igtv igtv i was posting it on my stories on facebook and youtube yeah because what you guys will find out is that jen is the queen of social media She's getting some accolades for that, some recognition. We'll dive thank more into you, that at a later you. date. Um, but yeah, so she started this little project, and um, I love the fact that you took it on, and now it's kind of evolved into something else where we can partner together and uh, highlight some other female entrepreneurs within the Columbus area. Well, that's exactly what happened. You and I started talking, and if you guys can't pick up on it, Michael and I are kind of complete opposites um, I think more than kind of I mean a hundred percent but so what what it is is um, I when we talked I just told her my story as well and when she told me her story I felt really touched by it we took what was supposed to be like a 45 minute meeting and I think it lasted for two hours we might have had some drinks we were laughing really hard by the end um, but it was one of those experiences where I just felt like I need to have this person in my life. I need to, the, the most rewarding thing I've gotten out of becoming a real estate agent is how many people I get to know and now become a part of my life because I cannot tell you how like blessed I feel just Absolutely. to have that. Absolutely. Um, so that's where you came in and totally. I was touched by you and I was like, this girl, I don't know, we knew of each other. We, we kind of had like the same ish group of friends but sure. never really communicated and um i was like we're we're gonna be friends i feel it right on so like really i think this show has been kind of born out of our passion for what we do yeah because we you know have very similar passions um and you know being an entrepreneur myself i understand the struggles the failures everything you're talking about mindset um, i haven't quite gotten the social media piece uh down Pat yet, but I'm going to look to you for some help with that. I got you. <laughs> you got me. Um, but the idea is here that, that we want to kind of take what we've learned, we want to share it, and then we want to invite other entrepreneurs, 
um, you know, who have really a story to tell and can talk about the failures and the mindset, everything you touched on, and how they figured out their why and how they have launched a business and become super successful. That's kind of the mission here and that's what we want to run with. I couldn't agree more. We are really set to just move forward and become a powerhouse of females in the community that support each other. Right on. Um, because, you know, it was interesting too, one of the things you said when we first sat down to meet was that women have not been so supportive of each other, but I, and I said to you, I think that's rapidly changing. I have met so many females through social media, on Instagram, um, through networking groups. We go out together, we have drinks, we go to new restaurant openings, and that is something where I would have never been with this group of females before. Right. And they are amazing and incredible, and I, you get to hear everyone's story. So right now, we're in full-blown support mode. It's time to like take care of it and just make it even bigger. So you really do feel like there's a strong support system. Say, just in the Columbus area, other female entrepreneurs who are willing to help each other and, and help each other climb the ladder. 100%. Like, I couldn't even agree more. Like, everyone is coming together at this current time to make it as successful as you can be with all of the trials and tribulations we have in this current world. Um, we're trying really hard to at least support each other. I feel it out there. For sure, for sure. So let's talk just real quick, and this is something we'll touch on again here when we wrap the show up, but what kind of guests are we looking for? Um, because we want to kind of put the message out there that we want to bring female entrepreneurs on. We want to hear their story. We want you know to have a conversation with them and hear how they have obtained their success. Um, so what we're looking for are super successful female entrepreneurs. And, and I think um, what that means is, is if you have reached a level that you feel successful and you know that you have a story to tell and you know that you have, have battled and you are you know coming out on top, um, we, we want to hear the story, right? Yeah, and I also want you to not start off super successful, and I think we need people that have that background story. And even if you're not super successful, I don't care. Maybe, you know, I'm not, I don't consider myself to be super successful. I've been in my industry for less than two years. I'm by no means super successful. I can't wait to learn and grow Absolutely. so much more. But what I do know is I made a lot of mistakes and I also had a lot of really awesome and amazing things happen to me. So if I can share that with somebody and they can learn from it, yes. So if you have a story to tell, you can actually email us to um, get on the show with us and talk to us. And that's at 614fempreneur at gmail.com. Yep, you got it. So shoot us an email if you want to uh, possibly be a guest on the show. We'd love to hear your story. Uh, so reach out to us and we'll respond and, and set up some sort of time to talk and kind of hear what, what you're all about. Anything else to add to that as far as what we're looking for? Are we going to go on break? I think we are going to take a quick break here in two minutes. Oh, good. So one of the things that we want to talk about, too, when we come back, and I just want to prepare yes, you for it, for sure. is you have to tell your story, too, Michael, because I think everybody needs to hear that. I mean, nobody wants to just hear about the social media real estate agent for too long. They so don't? No, they don't. Oh, okay. I, I mean, maybe I, I they have do. I to participate. Okay. Okay, yeah, so you have All to right, participate, good deal. too. I, I can do that. Um, okay, that sounds good. You want to give that email address one more time? Yeah, so it's 614-F-E-M-P-R-E-N-U-E-R -E -E at gmail.com. And also, I would love it if you followed me at Welcome Home 614. Good deal. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a break. Good enough. Okay. So, I'm doing great. Don't rush through. Yeah, I talk like, too fast. No, no, you're both doing it. Like, okay. Nothing's wrong. Okay use the time so what you're doing is you're trying to use a lot of words to just like get into what you're getting into and right. really get into it because like you're saying even if you're not super successful what you want to say is even if you're just getting started this would mm -hmm. be the place to be yeah right, right? we want to hear your story and we want to be part of that growth so talk about both things okay what i would do is i would let michael tell her story so bring it back and you can say you know what you didn't get a chance to tell your story, but really tell that story. Tell yeah. the story like you told us in the BNI, and uh, like not just about what you're doing every day, but why did you start it? Okay. Right. Yeah. So that's it. Otherwise, just slow down. You're doing great, but don't rush we don't to need get to there. Rush you have plenty okay. of time. 
Okay, cool. You can start anytime you like. You ready to tell your story? I guess. I All have right. to. Okay, ready? Yeah. Welcome back to 614 Fempreneur. I am your host, Michael Chaney, and I'm here with the one and only JKW. All right, what should we dive into now? Okay, so I think it's only fair that you get to tell your story. Uh, when I first met you, I was definitely moved, and um, I want to hear a little bit about why you got into painting, growing up, what what changed your life, and um, a little bit about your current business. Okay, I can do that. Um, so here's what I'll start with. You, you, we talked a little bit about the why. And one thing I've learned um, is being a business owner is that sometimes you don't know your why in the beginning. For me, that kind of evolved after I really got into the painting business and I realized what an impact I could have on people. So in the beginning, my why, kind of like you, was just for my family. You know, I started painting on the side just as a side hustle. And it was really to drive some more income into my pocket. And um, I had a knack for painting. And a lot of that I contribute to my, my mom because I grew up with a single mom. And she took really good care of our home. We were always painting the walls, putting wallpaper up, taking it down. And she really kind of, I think, without her knowing, instilled in me this idea that regardless of the situation, if you feel comfortable at your home, if you have a nice home, whatever that means to you, that that can really shape your life and, and you know, it can be uplifting and, and I really think it can just change your life. So absolutely, a lot really of this, important. crazy enough, as I've gotten older and I've grown this business, I really look back and kind of see how a lot of this really was instilled in me at a young age for my mom. Um, but basically, I, I started painting as a side hustle and realized that I really liked it. I was pretty good at it. Um, and from there, I've grown it into a, a viable business. And um, we, you know, work with many of the top remodelers in Columbus. And our real goal and, and my why that has kind of shifted over the years yeah. has come back to changing people's lives. And, and I know it sounds crazy and maybe a little cliche, but you can really do that with paint. And the way that we do that at No Drip Painting is uh, it's kind of twofold. And the first piece of that is how we impact our painters. We treat them well, we pay them top dollar, and I really believe that we honor this craft that they have. How many um, painters do you have right now, Michael? So we're, we're kind of in the process of hiring, but we have a team of about 15. And, and we, we're we actually hiring, so if there are any painters out there, <laughs> no drip painting, uh, you, you can contact me. But we, uh, we, you know, we have a good, strong team, and I really, we take a lot of pride in the quality and the customer experience that we provide. So that's kind of our angle and our approach as far as the painting business goes. But in terms of this being my business and changing lives, I really feel like we're doing that for our painters. Um, you know, we have painters that are able to provide for their family. We have painters who have built houses in El Salvador for their families back in El Salvador. And um, because we, we treat them the way that we do, and, and I really believe that, that you know making a good wage is essential to what we're doing, uh, we change their lives. And then I believe that we do that on our uh, customer side of things, and we do that because we are really helping folks create a great space that they're proud of. So you're changing lives on multiple tiers, and that's your why. It is now, and like I said in the beginning. I think a why can shift, don't you? Absolutely. Sure. And I think once you get into something, what I have learned from my side hustle is that I'm super passionate about business. I love the strategy, even though there's a lot of headache, fear, uncertainty with all of that. Right. I love that piece of it. Um, so I really found a love for business. And uh, again, which is kind of the purpose of this show is to highlight other business owners who are out there doing their thing. Um, so yeah, that's you know kind of the gist of it. And my why has shifted to something greater and bigger as I've grown and I've learned more and I've become comfortable being a business owner. I love that. I mean, again, this is why I just was drawn to you when we first talked because it's a great story. You're so proud of your business as you should be and you're literally changing multiple people's lives. Trying to, I'm kind of yeah. obsessed with it. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I do find 
at least in my circle of life, that those business owners who are out really trying to do it, trying to kill it, are somewhat obsessed with what they're doing. How do you mm -hmm. feel about that? Um, I agree 100%. So here's the thing. If you are not, for me, every day, every waking minute, I am thinking about multiple things. I'm thinking about how I can make my business grow, how I can learn more. What can I do to increase productivity? What can I do to be better, be a better human? What can I give back to my community? So you have to be obsessed with right. it. It's not just a job. It's not a career. It's your lifestyle. Right on. Um, and But there's different ways to be obsessed with it. I mean, we're obsessed in a happy um healthy-ish way. I mean, I might stay up till 2 a.m. a lot of nights working, uh, but I I don't know. If I didn't have, I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Previously, I was in the hospitality industry for 15, 16 years. I ran nightclubs, restaurants, um, and I was good at it, and I liked it, but it was not a love. It wasn't a passion. Right. Right. And to actually be in a field where I know that I'm doing things for people and changing people's lives is um, phenomenal. And every day I get to do it again. Totally. And Mondays, I think we had this, the, the Monday conversation before, like what did before you were in your business Mondays look like for you? Because I personally like had the Sunday night, like stomach, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to go to work the right. next day. I'm right. devastated feeling. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, had many jobs over the years and, and I certainly didn't love them and wasn't passionate about them and it had nothing to do with where I was working. I just didn't know my why, right? Right. Um, so in addition to being, re being a realtor, you've got some other side projects going on like 614 Fempreneur, but you're also in the process of flipping a house. Yes. So I want to dig into that because um, first of all, it's pretty, pretty cool. Thank you. Um, and I know it's a lot of fun. And you have, do you have an Instagram account for your house? I don't. We just have a hashtag. Okay. So this house was really special to me. It um, was a home that I sent out a regular mail or two. I actually had my mom help me um, address envelopes. And she told me when she addressed this one that um, it was Elizabeth Brown. And she said, she's going to contact you. And... Um, so she you did. were sending out mailers to in hopes to hundreds find, of people. And, to, and realtors often do this type yeah, of thing, and they, they go hoping knock to find on a doors. home to sell. Yep, exactly. And so she called me. I went to her house. Um, we talked, and the sweetest older woman I could ever imagine. She was hysterical. She cursed so much, so we automatically became best friends because I had the worst mouth ever. So the producer, bless his heart. This is probably really yeah, hard for you. This isn't is it? so hard for me, Doug. Ugh. Um, but. So we became immediate friends, and um, she wasn't ready to sell. She lived there for so long, and she just loved her home, and it's in Southern Orchards, and um, she just said, like, Jen, I'm not there. So I went back and visited her a couple of times just to actually talk at this point. She told me the stories of the neighborhood, and she passed away, and her son called me up and told me, my mother really liked you. She talked about you a lot. Um, she thought you were such a great person. Thanks for visiting her. Unfortunately, she's no longer with us. Do you think you would sell her home? I went over to sell it and I just couldn't do it. I was like, no, I have to buy this home. I have to do something with it. Because you had heard her, her whole backstory. Yeah. And wasn't this this home kind of in, in the family for years? And oh, She had so many, she had so many children and stories about it. Um, she was a very proud woman. So it was really important to me. We purchased, I purchased the home with business partners. Um, that we are flipping it together since it's my first one I would never recommend you do it by yourself but um, and I knew that and I didn't want to make a silly decision off the bat so I found the perfect people to partner up with and they've been beyond amazing and uh, we can't wait to grow the business even more that's awesome mm -hmm. that's awesome um, any other side projects that you have going on I, <laughs> I don't know that I can take on <laughs> any more right now but um, I just think that as far as the flipping goes and as and what we're doing with 614 Fempreneur and real estate, um, in the last two years, I couldn't be more thankful for this, but it could be a really good opportunity for our listeners out there to reach out to us via our email account and Absolutely. maybe send us a couple of questions because I can tell you multiple mistakes I've made and I'm sure you can and for we're sure. going to have guests on 
that are really going to be able to provide so much insight. So maybe if we start getting some questions in, that Absolutely. could be a great thing too. That'd be awesome. So let's touch back on the guests we're looking for. So we want female entrepreneurs who are somewhat established. We need you to have a story. We want to hear all about the story, all the, the rough patches and, and all of the success. How do they reach out to us? What's the email address? It is 614-FEMPRENEUR at gmail.com. 614-F-E-M-P-R-E-N-U-E-R at gmail.com. You got it. And so, then also at Welcome Home 614. Follow us there, and uh, you can get updates on real estate, women in business, fun. I do a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. I make fun of myself. I'm super sarcastic. You got it. And we'll, we'll touch on your social media at a later date because you've really got a good thing going there. Thanks. Um, so if you are a female entrepreneur and you're interested in being on the show, please reach out to us. Other than that, we will catch you next time. Thanks for joining us. I can't wait. Bye, guys.